Well, we're going to continue on the theme of prayer. We have Pastor Roy with us this morning, Pastor Roy Hayes, and uh, he's going to share some more insight along the line of prayer. But Pastor Roy, before we get started, again, I, I know your wife, she went to heaven, Pastor Sandy, in February, and I just want to express personal condolences to you. And I know we all know where she is, but as your ministry partner and your life partner, I'm sure that adds some challenges. So our condolences to you in the season. How are you doing? Doing well, thank you. Uh, she's in a better place. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Uh, yeah, that, that is for sure. And we're here and you're still fighting the good fight and going to give us some instruction today on uh, some more on how to do that through prayer. Uh, just looking at your bio sheet, you guys uh, started in ministry in 1986. That was a while ago. And um, yes, yeah, and uh, you started out doing outreach, just uh, you, you and we were evangelizing hard to reach areas, it said. And then, as a, a part or as a result of your evangelism, you began to do some Bible studies on the foundations of Christian living, and, and we're part of founders of Christian Living Ministry. Uh, and so, uh, that was where was that? What city was that in? A region, uh, yes, Tampa. This is where we are right now in Tampa. Okay, very good. And then uh, you started a new church in 1987 and uh, helped there providing uh, or presiding over victory services. Was that part of the outreach ministry and discipleship ministry there? Uh, yes, it was. All right. And then uh, you were ordained with AFCM in 1988. So you got a long history with us and we've had the privilege of running into each other at some of the conferences and the family reunions, but it's a, it's a privilege to be with you face to face, Pastor Roy. And you're going to share with us about obedience to prayer. Uh, the power, uh, yes. the, the, the need for obedience. I like that obedience in prayer. Uh, just as Pastor Marianne was sharing, there's things we know, but I think there's things we neglect or forget, or uh, we might know them up here, but as far as, activating them and practicing them and as Paul said to Timothy stirring those things up I think all of us uh, can use the the reminder and the encouragement uh, and so I looked at your prayer outline man it, you you've got some powerful scriptures there so I'm going to turn it over to you and look forward to what you have to share with us this morning amen well I want to say hello to everybody and it's a pleasure to be able to share the word of God with you today um, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, if you have your Bibles, turn in John 16 and verse 23, and we'll start reading there. And I also want to share a little bit about uh, uh, what uh, Pastor Marianne said uh, about the blood of Jesus. It has no shelf life. It is always living. Amen. And we need the blood of Jesus. Amen. So this is John 16 and verse 23. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and you will receive that your joy may be full. To connect with you uh, today, I'm going to ask a series of questions that I really want you to uh, consider to think about. Do you really know the purpose of prayer? Are you satisfied with your prayer life? Do you think prayer is high on God's list of the things he's asked us to do? Is prayer just another religious tradition to you? Or are you just going through the motions? Is prayer for you a lifestyle or is it an event? Why is prayer a big deal with God? How effective is your prayer life? Why do we pray when God knows what we need before we pray? That's a good place to start. Well, you see that God has an unconditional will, and he also has a conditional will. God's unconditional will is when he determines what will happen, irrespective of what man does here on this earth. The conditional will is where he's decided not to do anything without the cooperation of a man who is a spirit, 
that lives in a body on the earth. And he does that through the mechanism of prayer. What we have to understand is that God cannot legally do anything here on this earth unless a man or human prays. And why is that? Uh, let's look at Psalms 115 and verse 16. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of men. Now let's look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Remember, when God speaks, his word becomes law. If you notice, he did not say, let us have dominion or control. He said, let them have dominion, or you can say control. And God cannot violate his word. Let's look at Psalms 89 and verse 34. And it reads, my covenant I will not break nor alter the word that has gone out of my lips once I have sworn by my holiness. So God is spirit without a body. For God to intervene into the earth, he needs a body. When God wanted to redeem mankind, he had to prepare himself a body to work through. And we understand that body was Jesus Christ. Jesus was Emmanuel, God with us. So now, we know that Jesus is no longer walking the earth. He's at the right hand of God. So God still needs a body. And that body is the church. This is, this is us. We are the body that God uses that he can channel his power through. When we pray, we give God permission to influence the world to make the earth as it is in heaven. That's God's will. Now we can see this played out in Acts chapter 12, starting at verse 1. And, and let's let's read that together. Now, about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church. And because he saw it please the Jews, excuse me, I missed the line. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Peter was therefore kept in prison, but constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church in a session. And we understand that these churches were filled with the Spirit, so they were praying in other tongues. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains between two soldiers. And the guests before the door, excuse me, the guards before the door were keeping the prison. Now behold, an angel of the Lord stood by him and a light shone in the prison. And he struck Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise quickly. And his chains fell off his hands, supernatural. Then the angel said to him, gird yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. So he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real, but thought he was seeing a vision. When they were past the first and the second God post, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, which opened to them of his own accord. And they went out and went down one street, 
And immediately the angel departed from him. And when Peter had come to himself, he said, Now I know for certain that the Lord has sent his angel and has delivered me from the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the Jews. So God was able to change Peter's situation because the church prayed, the body of Christ prayed, and God was able to hear from heaven and dispatched an angel to deliver Peter. So we give God access to the world and the situations in the world through our prayers. So now I have some more questions I want to share with you that I want you to consider. Have you ever prayed a selfish prayer? I think we all have it sometime. Do you spend a lot of time praying for yourself, for your church, or for your ministry because you don't think nobody else will? Well, God wants to change that kind of a thinking. Let's look at James chapter 4 and verse 1. I've uh, ministered to many people, talked with many people, and they have this attitude that if I don't pray for my ministry or for myself, nobody else will. I don't believe anybody is praying for me. And uh, have you ever said this? Uh, I don't know if they have any faith. I know I have faith. So I don't need prayer from anybody else. I have faith in God myself. And how wrong can we be? Uh, we're going to go through some scriptures, and we're going to see that it's not God's will for us to think that we have to pray for ourselves all the time. So let's look at James chapter 4 and 1. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war. Yet, excuse me, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. The Amplified said because you have selfish motives. The Phillips translation said, you only want to satisfy your own desires. Got another question for you to think about. Do you have the attitude that every man is for himself when you pray? You know, I'm going to take care of number one first. I'll pray for myself and the others can pray for themselves. Now, is that the attitude that we should have? Every man for himself attitude. Well, let's see what the scriptures has to say about that. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 and verse 4. It says, let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of of others. Now we know the Bible says that love does not seek her own. So if it's not love, it doesn't profit us. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2 and 4 in the message. I like the way the message puts this. It says, don't be obsessed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourselves long enough to lend a helping hand. So we are told to watch and pray and not to be oblivious to what's happening around us. So think about this. Uh, we see a whole lot going on today in, in, to, in the world today, uh, a lot of things going on. And do you sit around and do you complain about what's going on? Are you criticizing? Now, if you're complaining about all the negative things that you are seeing that's happening in the world, talking about them and um, criticizing them, that means that you are not, you're not praying. 
The only way to change the situation that you are complaining about is to pray and give it to God. And we understand that but God says, cast all your cares upon him because he cares for you. So we shouldn't be complaining and criticizing all the things that we're looking at. We should be praying to allow God to get in on our situation and change that situation. Uh, and let's look at Matthew 10 and verse 39. So we're talking about obedience in, in prayer. He who finds his life will lose it. And he who loses his life for my sake will find it. Now I'm going to read that from the message. If your first concern is to look after yourself, you'll never find yourself. But if you forget about yourself and look to me, you will find both yourself and me. So God is changing the way we think about prayer today. Let's look at Matthew 7 and verse 12. And let's read that in the message version. And it says, here is a simple rule of thumb guide for behavior. Ask yourself what you want people to do for you. Then grab the initiative and do it for them. And another question for you. Do you know why it is more blessed to give than to receive? Well, you're actually investing in your future. We understand that what you sow, you're going to reap. Sow prayers, get prayers. When you need prayer the most, God will handpick someone of faith just to pray for you because you've done all the above. You've done your due diligence by praying for other people and not just praying all the prayers on yourself, but you're giving yourself to praying for the things that you're seeing every day. So you can allow God to get in those situations and change those situations. So you're sowing those kind of seeds. So when that time comes, when you really need prayer, and let's just face it, sometimes we're just not with it. Uh, we're dealing with things on a daily basis, and actually our faith is not as high as we would like for it to be. And we need some help. Well, God has a foolproof plan here. If you do it for others, he'll make sure he'll do it for you. So think about this. If you spend a, a whole lot of time praying for you, now I want you to think about this now. Because normally, if you're praying for you a whole lot, normally you're praying the same prayers over and over and over again. So if you're doing that, I want you to, to think about this scripture here. 1 John 5, chapter 5, and verse 14. This is the confidence that I have in him. If I ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, we know we have the petition that we have desired from us. Uh, when we find ourselves praying the same prayers over and over and over again, we're saying that we don't believe God heard our prayer. So we know that, that it's not faith. So now if you believe that, that means that frees you up to pray for the other things. You know, the Bible says that we should bear the burdens of the weak. And there are people, we know, we see things in your church. You see people, you see things in your city or whatever. They need prayer. They need God in their life. And this is where we come in as, as intercessors, as Miriam taught, to pray and lift those areas up. But you know what? If you're praying for yourself all day, <laughs> you don't have time to pray for anybody else. <laughs> so God wants us to get the, the revelation of allowing him to come in, to hear from heaven, to heal our land, but he can only do that through a human. 
a person down here on this earth who has legal rights. Isaiah chapter 1 and 19 says, if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. So I'm going to read it this way. If you're willing and obedient, or if you pray for others, you will eat the good of the land. So now, Dr. Caseman came to my church some years ago. I guess it's been about 20 years ago. It's been a while. And he was teaching a message, and he, he mentioned something about a banquet. I, I, I imagine he would remember this. And I'm going to give my version of it. Uh, there's this banquet with 100 people there. There are uh, two tables, long tables. And 50 were sitting at one table, and 50 were sitting at the other table, and there were 25 sitting across from each other. One table, they were happy. They were rejoicing. They were fellowshipping. They were eating um, a meal fit for a king. Each table had identical food. And, and they were healthy and they were strong. They, was just, they were just rejoicing. The other table, they were sad. They were sickly. They were weak. And they were emaciated. Well, <laughs> the problem was their utensils. And I'm, I, I put something together here to give you a picture of what was going on. They give them these long forks to eat. Maybe some of you remember uh, Dr. Caseman mentioning this in some of his messages, but they gave them this long fork to eat. Now, the table that was sickly, um, emaciated, and weak, they were trying to feed themselves. It's all about me. And so they couldn't eat. Now, the table that was the guys that were plump, and healthy, and strong, they were feeding each other. I know Dr. Caseman remembers this now. And by them feeding each other, they supported one another. And actually, this is how the body has been put together, where we support one another. So, in other words, God says, what good you do for others, he'll make sure he'll do for you. If you pray for other people, like I said, you want to spend a whole lot of time on your prayers if, you, if you're believing and standing in faith. But when that time comes, when you really need someone, I'm talking about someone in faith, someone that knows the word of God. How many of you know that God knows that person out there? That he can handpick that person just for you? because he stands by his word to perform it. And you can have confidence that when you're going through something that you don't have to fear. You can have confidence that God has somebody praying for me. Somebody's praying in tongues and I'm getting my answer in this situation that I'm in. That's awesome church, amen? Okay, now I wanna to touch on something else. First Thessalonians chapter five and four. Verse 17, I normally walk around and preach. Um, I don't normally sit still, but I'm trying to contain myself today. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ for you. So we know that to pray without ceasing is the will of God. So now, this question here, is it possible to pray without ceasing? Well, if he said for us to do that, I really believe it is. There's different forms of prayer. Pastor Miriam mentioned one, uh, praying in tongues in a session. And there is the petition prayer where we normally pray. This is pray that is prayed more than anything. I want this, I want this, I need this. Please, God, give me this. This is that petition prayer. But also, meditation is prayer also. So I want you to think about this. Meditation is just thinking about the word of God and the goodness of God. So now you know you're thinking all the time anyway. I mean, I mean, you can't stop thinking. So you're thinking without ceasing. So 
just start thinking about how good God is. Thinking about his word, that's a form of prayer. So you are praying without ceasing. Then you, you have your thanksgiving. That's another form of prayer. I mean, you need to wake up in the morning, you thank God that you woke up, you're healthy, you're sound, and it's a healthy family, you got a job, and you, you, uh, you're happy, and, and you live in a, a, a beautiful country, and you're happy that you live in America. It's just so much to think about, thank God about. So you can thank God every day. You have a job. Um, prayer, praise. Uh, you can praise God all the time for his goodness. Worship for who he is to you. He's your refuge, he's, he's your fortress, he's your strong tower, he's your healer and deliverer. And then just speaking the word is praying. Just think, think about this. Every time you say, you pray. And sometimes some of you talk too much. <laughs> so you can talk, speaking the word, consistently during the day, you're praying without ceasing. So I just want to just cover that because I know so many people, you know, they read that scripture, praying without ceasing. How can I do that? And of course, praying in tongues. Uh, you're praying in the spirit. You're not praying in your own language. So just wanted to cover that. So I want to ask you a question. We understand. Uh, well, I actually am going to make a statement. Only the prayer of faith changes things. I think we all can agree on that. So now I have some more questions I want to ask you and I want you to consider. Have you ever prayed and did not believe that you had faith to get the answer? I know that sounds strange to ask a question like that. But there are many people praying and they don't believe that it's just a religious thing for them. They don't believe they're going to get an answer because they prayed so many prayers before and nothing happened. Well, the problem wasn't on God's end. So people are praying every day. I'm talking about Christians now. And actually, they don't believe that they're going to get an answer, but they're doing something. Do you feel that your faith is too little? Little faith. Do you think you need to ask God to increase your faith? That can be a little controversial there. Are you always on a quest for more faith? So I want to clear up some things about faith because it is the prayer of faith that changes things. Okay, so now listen to this. It is impossible to be a Christian without faith. Just like water come, comes with wet, Christian come with faith. So if you don't have wet, you don't have water. If you don't have faith, you're not a Christian. To get faith, you have to be born again. So if you're born again, you have the faith of Jesus. Uh, Romans 12 and 3, if you're familiar with the scripture, says that, God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So when you got born again, God blesses you with his faith. It is a gift. So this faith will always be in your born again spirit. Galatians 2.20, and I'm quoting from the, uh, the King James Version. It says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in this flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So who faith it is? It is not your faith. It is the faith of Jesus that you are living by, that is on the inside of your born again spirit. First John 5, 4. Uh, let's read that. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, 
our faith. Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? So whatever is in the world that comes against you, that steals, that kills, and destroy, your faith in Jesus has made you an overcomer. The coronavirus, you've already overcome that because of the faith that is on the inside of you. All sickness and disease you've overcome. Social injustice, you've overcome. You've overcome racism. You've overcome hate because of your faith. The Bible says no weapons formed against us shall prosper. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, a spirit of love, spirit of a sound mind, power to change things, love to endure all things, sound mind, self-control, self-discipline to endure all things. Let's look at Matthew 17 and 20. I'm going to just quote it real quickly here. For surely I say to you, this is Jesus, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there and it will move and nothing, I like that, nothing will be impossible unto you. He said mustard seed faith. So Jesus is saying mustard seed faith is unmatched unrivaled by any attack of the enemy, by any virus, any sickness, anything in this world that comes against you. And you know what? You have much more faith than a mustard seed faith because it took great faith for you to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And so Jesus saying, just a little bit of that faith, a mustard seed faith that you can barely see will annihilate, will triumph over any attack of the enemy in this world. So he's saying you won't need any more than mustard seed faith to be a world overcomer. And again, you have much more faith than that because it took great faith for you to become born again. Let's look at 2 Peter chapter 1. So I'm going over these scriptures here and, and trying to open them up to make, to, to make sure that you understand that you have the faith because if you believe that you have the faith, then listen to what I'm about to say, to get all your prayers answered because that's God's will for us. When we pray his will, that's why he told us to pray his will because every time we pray his will, he wants all of your prayers to be answered. That's his that's his desire. And Jesus said, so that your joy will be full. So I believe if you believe that you have enough faith that you can get all your prayers answered, you'll be more, uh, more motivated to pray. You'll pray more. A, a lot of people in the church are not praying like they should because they don't believe they're going to get an answer. Because they pray so many pray prayers and they fail. Now, again, it's not because of God. It's because of something that they're doing. They're not uh, operating in the word properly and concerning faith and prayer. And that's why we're teaching right now. Um, Second Peter chapter 1. Simon Peter, a bond servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. To those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So now this is P uh, Peter here saying, we have already obtained what? Like precious faith, equal to his faith, the same quality. So a question here that I want you to think about. So we understand, let me just back up a little bit because I need to just review some things to, to ask you this question. So we understand that we have the faith of Jesus on the inside of us. 
Okay, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you think it is possible for you to have more faith in Jesus? Now, I know that sounds like a, a, a stupid question, because I know you're going to say, there's no way I can have more faith than Jesus. Now, we just, I just quoted a scripture in Galatians 2.20 that we do have the faith of Jesus. So I'm going to ask you this question. Why would you ask God to increase your faith? Now, if you're asking God to increase your faith, think about what I'm about to say here now. You're asking God to give you more faith than Jesus because you already have the faith of Jesus on the inside of your born-again spirit. So I just want to just clear up some things because, let me ask you this, if, if you think that you don't have enough faith to get the job done, that you're always on a quest for more faith, looking for more faith, how could you be fully persuaded? Uh, just, I want you to think about that. I want that to set in. You're going to have to give this some thought because this might go against the, what you've heard or what you thought before just give it some time if if you think that you always need more faith you can't be fully persuaded because you're always thinking there's something liking something's always going to come up that i don't have enough faith to deal with but we we read in the scriptures here that you have all the faith you need and you think about this Jesus said, just a mustard seed faith. Nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing. Just a little bit of faith. And if you're a Christian, you know you have that, but that's not the truth. You have more than that. You have the faith of Jesus. And that faith is limitless. So I know I'm pounding that point over and over again because I want you to think. Think about this. So Peter is saying we have already obtained this kind of kind of faith. So, again, as I get ready and close, Jesus is saying that when you ask the Father in his name, he's going to give you what you ask for so that your joy may be full. So when you start praying, God starts to work. So God needs you to pray so he can impact your city, your country, your church, and your ministry by you praying and seeking his face. Pray without ceasing and be a conduit of God's hand in the earth today. I'm going to close with that. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Roy. There was... Lots of good stuff in there. I like your style. You, you ask questions, provoking questions, makes us think. So thanks so much for that. Uh, a couple takeaways, what you were sharing about maybe in the current environment we're in, our propensity to sit and complain versus to pray. And uh, that, that hit home. I, uh, I can see that. And sometimes in our church, the kind of the murmuring about things instead of taking those things to the Lord. So thanks so much for the reminder about that. And the other one I really liked is the fork, the, uh, about feeding each other, that our prayer uh, and, you know, not just being concerned, Lord, me, 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 but serving each other in prayer. That was, that was excellent and praying the prayer of faith. So thank you so much for the effort you put in and sharing with us. I believe it's going to make a difference in AFCM. I bless you. Well, thank you for having me. Oh, it's a privilege. It's a privilege. And we'll see you hopefully face to face uh, in the family reunion next year. I'm well, in agreement with that. Comes up and shares the word. We're going to uh, receive the offering today for AFCM. Um, there will be a graphic that comes up on your screen that gives you some information on how you might be able to give. Uh, it was uh, probably uh, six weeks ago or now or so that. Uh, Dr. Jim, he, he got us all together, uh, the regional directors. We did it via, I think it was a Zoom call. And uh, I, the Canadian directors from Alaska, all over the U.S. And we were just talking about the impact of this COVID uh, thing on our churches. And then we started talking about our finances. 
And it was amazing how many of the regional directors talked about how God was providing, that he was taking care of financial needs. And there was just some supernatural stories of just his provision. And then we got on to the topic of training and teaching our people about faith, about, uh, as uh, Pastor Roy was just sharing, sowing and reaping, the idea of what we sow, we reap. And uh, we talked about just because of that training that's come through uh, AFCM, from uh, Jim Caseman to us, uh, that's helped to form our spiritual thinking, uh, and then passing that on to our people, that they stay faithful in good times and in challenging times. And so uh, I can say that at our church, Agape Church, in my own life and ministry, I stepped down about a year and a half ago to help do missions and working halftime at the church. And when COVID came, all the mission travel and outside speaking went away. And I've seen God be faithful uh, because we've tried to stay faithful with our giving and our sowing. So we just appreciate that at AFCM, your faithful support. Missions, ministries continue. Uh, and we just thank you for remembering us. And if you want to give towards AFCM, you can do so uh, on several different ways. It's explained in the graphic right there. Uh, God bless you for your giving. Father, we just honor you. Uh, we just came through Father's Day where we're reminded of the commandment that says, honor your father and mother that might go well with you. And honoring you, Lord, through your word, there's places where honor has to do with being a partnership and what's in your heart, God, and what you're uh, wanting your people and your church to do. And so we honor you with our first fruits. We honor you with our giving today, Lord, and ask you to multiply it for all the needs of AFCM for the administration, the leadership, for the things that are in their heart to do. We thank you for blessing uh, Jim and Kathleen Caseman, Lord, your provision for their ministry, their oversight and leadership as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.